Hi, welcome. Today, we celebrate the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This feast honours the blessedness that was her destiny, the glorification of the Immaculate Soul and Virginal Body that completely conformed her to the risen Jesus. This is a celebration that offers to the Church and to all of humanity an exemplar and a consoling message, teaching us the fulfilment of our highest hopes. Their own future glorification is happily in store for those who Christ has made his brothers and sisters by taking on his flesh and blood. Let's begin. Hello, I'm Moragh and I'm from St Gregory's Parish. The first reading is from the Book of the Apocalypse. The sanctuary of God in heaven opened and the Ark of the Covenant could be seen inside it. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman adorned with the sun, standing on the moon and with the twelve stars on her head for a crown. She was pregnant and in labour, crying aloud in the pangs of childbirth. Then a second sign appeared in the sky, a huge red dragon which had seven heads and ten horns and each of the seven heads crowned with a coronet. Its tail dragged a third of the stars from the sky and then dropped them to the earth and the dragon stopped in front of the woman as she was having the child so that he could eat it as it was born from its mother. The woman brought a male child into the world, the son who was to rule all the nations with an iron scepter, and the child was taken straight up to God and to his throne, while the woman escaped into the desert where God had made ready a place of safety. Then I heard a, vo a voice shout from heaven, Victory and power and empire forever have been won by our God, and all authority for his Christ. The word of the Lord. On your right stands a queen in garments of gold. The daughters of kings are among your loved ones. On your right stands a queen in gold of offer. Listen, O oh daughter. St John Vianney's Parish. This is a reading from St Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Death has come through one man and in the same way the resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all men die in Adam, so all men will be brought to life in Christ, but all of them in their proper order. Christ as the first fruits, and then, after the coming of Christ, those who belong to him. After that will come the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God, the Father, having done away with every sovereignty, authority and power. For he must be king until he has put all his enemies under his feet, and the last of his enemies to be destroyed in death. For everything is to be put under his feet. The word of the Lord. Hello, my name is Scott McDowell and I'm a parishioner at St Catherine's. The Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia, 
Mary has been taken up to heaven. All the choirs of angels are rejoicing. Alleluia. The Gospel according to Luke. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Mary set out and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went into Zachariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, Of all women, you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honoured with a visit from the mother of my Lord? For the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believed that the promise made by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exalts in God my Saviour, because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid. Yes, from this day forward all generations will call me blessed, for the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name, and his mercy reaches from age to age for those who fear him. He has shown the power of his arm, he has routed the proud of heart, he has pulled down princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things, the rich sent empty away. He has come to the help of Israel, his servant, mindful of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, of his mercy to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. On the Feast of the Ascension, which we celebrated a couple of months ago, we marked the climax of the life of Jesus today. The Feast of the Assumption, we marked the climax of the life of Mary. Aware that we owe our redemption and salvation to the sacrificial death of Jesus, we must nevertheless remember the, the part that Mary played in the drama of salvation history. Without her, there would have been no saviour born. But she is given a special place in the life of Christians for other reasons. Brother Mike gave me a story to tell you. The Comanche Indians cried aloud to God, Oh, great spirit, our land is dying for want of rain, and we are dying too. Tell us what we have done wrong. What has made you angry with us? Tell us what we must do that will send rain once more and restore life to our lands. For three days, the people prayed this prayer. Then they waited. But no rain came. The children and the old people began to die. Among the children, there was a young girl by the name of Miriam. She watched her elders as they prayed. In her lap, she held a blue warrior doll, which she treasured above all else. She was very sad because her family and friends were dying one by one. Then the elders of the tribe went into the hills to listen to the wind which carried the voice of God. After many days they returned, gathered the people together and gave them the message that they received from God. They said that the drought had been caused by the selfishness of the people. For years they had taken from the earth but had given nothing back. They must therefore offer a sacrifice to God. All must make a burnt offering of their most valued possession. They were then to scatter the ashes over the land, and then the rains would come and life would return to the earth. The people thanked God for the message, but when they went home and looked at their most valued possession, they hesitated and began to make excuses. Then, instead of sacrificing their most valued possession, they sacrificed something else in its place. Meanwhile, little Miriam had been observing all this. It suddenly dawned on her that as the last child left alive, a 
a sacrifice was being asked of her also. So one night, while everyone was asleep, she crept out of the camp, taking the doll with her, together with a lighted stick. She made her way to the top of the hill. There, she knelt down and said to God, O oh, great spirit, I want to do my part so that life will return to our land. I don't have much. All I have is this doll, but if you want to take it, I'm offering it for my people. With that, she set fire to the doll. With tears in her eyes, she watched it turn into ashes. Then she gathered the ashes into her hands and threw them into the air so that the wind scattered them all over the land. Then she fell asleep right there on the hilltop. Next morning, she wakened, sat up and looked over the land. As far as she could see, the ground was covered with blue flowers. The people were delighted when they saw what had happened. They got the message at once. Feeling ashamed at their selfishness, they got out the treasure that they had been guarding so carefully, sacrificed it and scattered the ashes over the land. Once again, they began to pray to God. At this time, he answered. Soon a gentle rain started to fall. When seeing it, they embraced little Miriam, who had shamed them into doing what God asked of them. Then they all started to dance for joy. The Gospel speaks of Mary making her way to her elderly cousin Elizabeth. Her very presence spells joy and wonderment, for she is a living tabernacle, carrying within her the Saviour of the world. She is blessed among all women, because she is the Mother of the Lord. However, there is more to it than that. Elizabeth goes on to proclaim that Mary is blessed because she believes. Her closeness to Jesus stems not solely from her physical motherhood, but still more from her faith. It's her faith that makes her the Lord's first disciple. First, not simply because she is the first to set eyes upon him, but rather because she is his number one follower. No one ever had such faith even though it was fiercely tested, even though it led her up the slope of Calvary's hill. As she was with him at the start of his earthly life, so she was with him at the end. The assumption is more than a piece of private information about Mary. It's a startling affirmation about us all. Mary has been described as the prototype of the church. She is the pattern and example for us of the faith and holiness to which we must aspire. She stands as the guarantee of the salvation that God offers to all those who would follow the example of Mary and obey the command of Jesus, that we love one another. We shall share in her joy, and God will be glorified. And today's feast will be truly a reason for us to celebrate. My name is Claire. Prayers of intercession on the Feast of the Assumption. On this feast day, we celebrate the life of Mary, the Mother of God. May we join with her and proclaim the greatness of our Lord and rejoice in God our Saviour and like Mary be open to whatever God may ask of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they will work together for the good of humanity and be open and honest with each other and with their people as they seek to find solutions to global problems 
including climate change, racial prejudice and the coronavirus. May they be steadfast in protecting the health and well-being of their people while safeguarding livelihoods and the economy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the poorest of the poor and all refugees throughout the world. For the safety of people where there is political unrest. For those who work tirelessly for peace. For all who work for the benefit of others, often putting their own lives at risk. And for the recovery of those injured in Beirut. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For people living in poverty, those who are struggling to cope day after day, night after night, grant that our hearts be moved to share what we have and always do our best to help those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For parents, students and teachers, that our schools will be safe places as they reopen. And for all who have received exam results this week, grant that those who are disappointed will be given encouragement and praise for their hard work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who suffer in mind, body or spirit, that they may be healed. We pray especially for Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who have died. May they rest in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May our celebration of Mary's entry into glory inspire you and in your living out of your own calling as disciples of Jesus during this coming week. Mary cooperated with the Holy Spirit in fulfilling her part in God's plan. May her example encourage you in your Christian life and witness. Mary is the mother of God and of the church. Through her intercession, may God grant you joy and hope today and every day. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sweet. 